Hey y'all, this is Amanda. Welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 Egg Garden. And today we're going to be doing uh, some general fertilizing throughout the garden beds. And I'm going to be pruning some different things along the way. And then at the very end, we're going to be planting out several celosia seedlings. So I feel like celosia, celosia seedlings is a tough a tongue twister for me. <laughs> so basically I'm going to be applying um, my Proven Winners fertilizer and I like to, when I'm fertilizing, I like to use that time to kind of look at each individual plant as I'm going through the garden. So I'll take a look as I'm going through and I'll show you guys the things that are having some issues and some things that need to be pruned or taken care of. Um, the Celosia seeds, seedlings, I have been growing for quite a while and they have needed to get out into the ground for a long time and we're finally having a reprieve in temperature in that it is finally dropped into the 90s and yes I said into the 90s <laughs> it has been in the hundreds and so today and tomorrow um, it's going to be a little bit cooler so I'll be outside getting some projects but let's look at the fertilizer and how I go about fertilizing everything okay so I'm just going to be utilizing my proven winners premium water soluble plant food specifically for flowering plants and um, one of y'all suggested that I utilize an old miracle grow dispersed situation so this guy is beat, beat up and so what I'm going to do is just basically empty the um, package of fertilizer into this and then it hooks up to my um, hose and then I water that way so let's go ahead and get that started okay so in all honesty my garden has been pretty neglected the last two to three weeks the weather has been so awful so intense y'all i just it's been really hard to bring myself to even be out here and there are a lot of things that are suffering that don't typically suffer so far in the month of august the average high for the day has been 105 and yeah you heard me 105 degrees and it's just been i mean august is usually the hardest month but this has been the worst ever. Incredibly dry, incredibly hot, stifling. And anybody who's gardening in the North Texas area or truthfully in Texas <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. It's been real rough. I'm losing things that I haven't lost in the past, things that I've done really good for years. And but this year it has just been terrible. So, but let's go, we'll look at some of that stuff as growing along, but my garden, I really don't know what's going on in my garden because it's just been, I just haven't really gotten out here to check it out. I've been really focused on the shade garden because there's no plants in there. So <laughs> that works well. Okay. So I emptied the whole bag into this container. I usually need a couple of bags to get through um, my whole garden. And so then at this point, I'll hook up my hose to this back part. Okay. We have a breeze today. Feels really nice. Um, so I'm just going to do some general watering, focusing on some different areas in uh, the garden. So my super tunias were doing really, really great until we hit about that third week of triple digit temps. And then they've really struggled. So I've lost a couple of more plants along the way, which is unfortunate. And um, I really think it might be beneficial to them to do another cutback. So I think that's something that I'm going to plan on doing. The hookahs up front here have continued to struggle. The only one that's really kind of doing okay is the black pearl. And if the black pearl ends up making it all the way to the fall, I think that I might invest in two additional black pearls. And add those to the mix over here because the wild berry and the cherry truffles, um, ha they're not doing good at all, truthfully. But you know, maybe they'll bounce back. They were doing better when they had more shade over here. Um, and they, had, they were shaded by other plants, so they did pretty good. I am trying to get some of the leaves wet as well. It's been so dry that spider mites are intense. And so they can, spider mites can be knocked off um, <clears throat> with water. 
this Japanese anemone. <laughs> He's struggling too. So these super tunas, even though they've bounced back really well um, because of the heat, they're struggling again. So I am going to go ahead and take off another layer of them as I'm hoping to limp them along until the fall. And if you haven't seen my super tunia video about trimming, kind of my philosophy for about them and what I've been trying to do, you can check that out. All right, so we'll just take those back a little bit. This kafia is just overrun by spider mites. So I'm just going to take it all the way back. And hopefully give this scavola a little bit more room to spread out if it wants to. I feel like right now it's just survival mode, survival mode, survival mode. I'm not really worried about anything looking pretty. I just want things to, to make it <laughs> till our cooler temps. They only need to make it about three more weeks. Um, once we get in September, we should drop down. We shouldn't be in the triples, triple digits the whole time. <laughs> Looks like I lost one whole Gallardia, and you know it's bad when Gallardia is struggling because Gallardia is usually like a monster for me. So I am going to give it a little bit of a trim back too, taking it back by about 50%. Gallardia typically loves these temps. And I'm going to just go ahead and take this salvia back too. Maybe it'll come back from the ground, who knows. You can tell by the amount of weeds that I haven't been work walking my garden as often. Tell you what, the weeds are happy. <laughs> they like this weather. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that my limelight hydrangeas don't typically make it through the summer. Um, what I thought has been a, a, a uh, fungus, I'm now wondering if it's just scorching. Um, that's really what it is. But anyway, I like to let the blooms um, dry out on here. And then I come through and I cut everything back. And then it will give me, once the weather chills out a little bit, it will give me a fresh new flush of leaves. It will not give me another round of blooms. But I'll end up using these dried hydrangeas for my fall decor. And this already has leaves, new leaves pushing through. I'll give you guys a close up of all that. And I'm just making sure that I'm cutting above a set of leaves. And this sucks that my hydrangeas do that. And I know a lot of y'all have suggested, oh, you, you should ditch these hydrangeas. But y'all, they still bring me so much joy. And I've just decided not to stress about it um, regarding their leaves falling off. I think I'm going to shift this guy planter over a little bit this has a salsa dancer hibiscus in it. and i love the coloring the variegation of the leaves is just fabulous and we'll go ahead and hit everything up with some fertilizer this is kind of fun because i can definitely see areas where i have room for some new planting i would love to get some coleus out here some fall colors Maybe I'll do that in the next couple of weeks, definitely by the end of August, because I know the cooler temps are coming. Okay, for some reason, the Suncredible Sunflowers have never thrived for me this year. They did excellent last year. I don't know what the deal is, but they're coming out. And they were in the exact same place as last year. Or, yeah, exact same place as last year, so I'm not sure what the deal is regarding that. I'm also going to give my Summerific Hydrangeas 
just a little bit of a cap at the top just to encourage a little bit more branching because they are getting pretty leggy. All right, my dahlias right here were doing great until, like I said, we got to these stupid weather, stupid tents. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them back to the ground. Um, they might flush, I don't know. There are some newer shoots coming from the bottom, so that's pretty encouraging. I do have, <laughs> that's hard to see, I do have a pink Turk's cap trying to do its business back here. So I'm going to move, cut back some of this crepe myrtle so that uh, it can get a little bit more sun back here and it should thrive a little more. The zinnias up front are doing well. I think if I use a little bit of a haircut, I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I'm just going to enjoy them because I don't have a lot of color in my garden right now. And they are some of the only things giving me color. I think next year with my crepe myrtle, I'm going to be more purposeful about pruning it so that I can start to create a multi-trunk look. Um, before I just had a single trunk. I'd like like a five, three or five trunk look. So I'd like to start cleaning it up more down low. Okay, so I've got some zinnias here and I do like them here. So I'm just grabbing an old piece of twine that was on the dahlias, cutting it open. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up one main branch of this just to keep it from falling over into my mower's path. And then I'm just going to deadhead it real quick just to clean it up. I'm not being real specific with it as I don't usually cut on this guy for flowers. It just comes back every year or reseeds itself every year. Okay, this Pugster butterfly bush is, I tried to just trim it back part way this year and it didn't work. Usually I trim it all the way back to the ground and then it flushes back and it's beautiful. So I tried the partial, it didn't work, so there we go. Let's try the full thing and see what happens. The verbena is doing really well. It really needs a drastic cutback in order to get new blooms, but it's so pretty and I just, I don't have any color. I'm gonna take back these uh, comb flowers over here. There's actually a container back here. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take back the verbena that's growing right in front of the container. So that we can actually see the container. Oh, this has really bad scale back here too. Yikes. Okay, you can see all the white sticky stuff in here. This is all scale. So I'm just gonna take this all the way back. This is a lantana in here. And I believe it had a scapola. Yuck. All right, maybe by taking this back and giving it a little more light, that'll help cut back on um, the scale. Ooh, that was not good. Okay, it's good that I kind of dug in there a little bit. Check that out. 
still left a little bit of color. See how great that plumbago is doing? Looks really pretty. Okay, so the area with this purse line is still looking really, really good. I could go through and trim out some grass and stuff, but I'm not going to stress about that today because this has turned into more than I thought it was going to be. So let's move over into this area. Looks like we need some pruning on um, the verbena and the balloon flowers. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. Okay, so this was the first year that I ever pruned back my balloon flowers and I got a really great response. So I'm very happy with that. I got a whole nother flush, so let's go ahead and give them another pruning. I'm just cutting them above a set of two leaves. I was super pleased. I couldn't believe it. I felt dumb that I wasn't doing it earlier. And yes, I know I am cutting off good blooms right now, but that's okay. Okay, now over here we have the Stormburst Verbena, and it's already been trimmed and given me another flush this year. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it back again. Third flush would be, just truthfully, um, really welcome. <laughs> I'm going to take this back a little bit more harshly. I'm definitely starting to see a lot of um, pests, more pests, and that's because of the heat. A lot of spider mites, a lot of uh, mealy bug scale kind of situations. I'm really loving the structure of the iris in the garden. I don't plan on adding any more this next year or this fall. I'd like to, since I've only had these for one year, I'd like to see how they do filling in before I start adding more because I don't want them to take over the whole garden. But especially at this time of the year, I'm very appreciative of their kind of unique gray green structure color and um, how much they add to the garden since I have so much that's struggling. Okay, these zinnias are coming pretty far over. So they're gonna get a cut back so that my mowers can get underneath them. But these guys will flush back, so I'm not, I'm not worried about them. and I'm just following the edge of the border. Dead one in there. Okay. And definitely time to take back the powwow coneflower. I don't know if it'll give me another flush. That would be awesome. I feel like um, coneflowers take a while, flowers take a while to come along. But man, when this guy was in full bloom, it was stupid gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. You'll be surprised to hear that I have been wearing gloves lately when digging in the dirt. <clears throat> the reason being is I've really struggled with my skin being so dry that it's cracking 
and then I am getting like little infections um, wherever the cracks are. And I think it's from digging in the soil and things like that. So I started um, wearing gloves again and I think it's made a big difference. Um, in my opinion, I think it's helped out a lot. And somebody, um, one of my subscribers mentioned something along those lines, like infections and stuff. So yeah, I was, I was surprised to be, to be dealing with that <clears throat> in all honesty, but okay. So we are going to be planting some celosia today that I've grown from seed and, um, it's all done really, really well. And some of the celosia is for my friend Kristen and some of it is for me. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm aiming for a emitter by each uh, plant, celosia plant that I'm planting. And the variety that I'm planting, this particular variety is this is orange peach coxcomb. And since I've grown these myself, I gotta say, I, I, I'm really proud. I think they're in really good shape. I think they look really, really nice. But I am, because it's the heat of the summer, I am putting these right by an emitter so that I know that they're gonna get watered on a daily basis. This next one is called Chief Red Flame. And I'm not putting any um, fertilizer in today out of pure exhaustion. I just want to get this done and get inside, y'all. Because even though it's so much cooler, it's still really hot. It's sad when you're really excited about 95. <laughs> 95 degrees. Awesome. It's a cool friend. Okay, the next variety I'm tucking in here is called Early Rose. <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies have been acting up. Okay, this next variety is called Sunday Bright Pink. And like I said, I'm aiming for an emitter for each of them. I don't know if that one's going to make it. I broke off some of his roots. Okay, now I'm going to tuck in some orange improved. And I'm kind of just working everything. Um, they are going to be mixed in with zinnias and cosmos over here. But that's fine. Okay, since I have this space up front, I think what I'm going to do ahead, go ahead and do is plant in this oriental to Celosia, and it is a way shorter variety of Celosia, and I think it will be excellent for fall, and I already have it all here, which is great. And this soil actually stays pretty moist, um, so I think I'm going to put it in pretty tightly over here, just because I think that'll look really nice. Oh, this makes me feel good. Okay, this soil is just really nice up here and um, I think that that would be I think that'll be a good start to my fall garden color and if these grow up nice and beautiful and red oh, that'll be so awesome I love that they really need it to get in the ground Celosia loves the heat in my area I am going to have to remember to water, so y'all know how I'm not great about that, so <laughs> hopefully I don't kill these. Okay, and I'm going to water these in really well, and I'm going to do my best to remember to come water them every day to begin with until they get settled in. And... I had to move my camera up to the porch because it keeps overheating. It's pretty sad when you're excited about 94, 95 degrees. It does, I mean, I'm hot right now, but it's a bazillion times better than it has been. About 10 degrees cooler, I'll take it. 
and I am going to water the ones in the back. I'm not going to show you guys that, but I will water it in. Every time you're planting new seedlings in, you need to water them in. Don't just put them into dry ground. And then, of course, when you're planting at the heat of the summer like this, you do need to be pretty diligent about getting everything watered. Okay, that ends up being a whole lot more than I thought it was going to be, <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I can't really sit on my porch right now because there's a couple of doves that have nested in the hanging basket and they get really upset if you go over there and they pooped all over my <laughs> porch too. It's fine. It is what it is. They decided to nest right on top of the begonias that I have in there. So the begonias aren't doing super well, but it, it's fine. It's fine. Yay, nature. <laughs> all right. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I hope you're handling the heat okay. Please know that you're not the only one whose garden is suffering. Um, there was a lot more work out here than I realized. And that happens when you, you know, don't spend consistent time out in your garden. I just couldn't. I, it's just too hot. I just couldn't do it. Didn't have the um, energy or the motivation. So I just started planning for the fall, which made me feel really good. And I started working on the shade garden, which made me feel really good. So if you want to shift gears and plan for something else in your garden, that's okay. You can totally do that. Do what makes you feel good bring enjoyment um, into your life through your gardening. All right, y'all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. <laughs> as always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.